everybody, it's Kathy Champion and you're here with me at Random Acts of Stamping. I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator here in North Carolina and I'm, just, I'm so glad that you take, you've taken the time to join me today here in my craft room. I've got some things to tell you, some exciting things that are coming up and I also just want to welcome you. Welcome you in. Come on in kick your shoes off, put your feet up, and we're going to do some crafting. But before we start, here is our January host code for anyone that's interested in ordering from my online store. If you spend $50 or more and you use this host code, you will receive a free gift from me um, at the end of the month, starting the beginning of the next month. So you will receive your gift probably the second week of February. And anybody that ordered in December will, re will be receiving their gifts um, the second week of this month, January. So with that being said, I'm going to stick this out of the way. It is on my blog, and it will also be under every video that I post in January. So it, you will always be able to find that host code. So I'm going to stick that over here out of the way. The next thing that I want to tell you about is I have a personal uh, promotion going on this month. Anyone that spends $75 um, in product, $75 or more, will be put in a drawing for a free um, die set and, sta and coordinating stamp set. And this is the So Much Happy. It is featured in the annual catalog on page 45, and it's called uh, So Much Happy. And this was a new stamp set, so I'm hoping they'll bring it back. Um, but this is a great stamp set for anyone that's celebrating birthdays, and we all need birthday cards. Here's some of the uh, items up here that shows what it can do. Um, you have this huge word here with this is happy, to have you in my life, to celebrate you, birthday, to know you, graduation, so very. You have the string for the balloons. You have um, two different sizes of balloons. You have a plain balloon where you can do the color and then you have the one with the stars then you have the smaller solid balloon with the stripes you also have a star and you have the little tie see the little tie that you can put on the balloon which is really cute up at the top um, and then you've got these stars that you can use to do a background stamp a very versatile stamp set but not only that look at these beautiful beautiful dies and I will be not today but I will be using this to show you just how versatile this stamp set can be and I'll be making some cards with that throughout the month but I wanted to let you know $75 or more and and the information will be listed in uh, the description below as well as on my blog so if you want to get in for the drawing, what I'll do is everyone that spends $75 or more in my store, you'll also receive the free gift from me at the end of the month, but your name will also go into a drawing to receive the stamp and um, uh, die set. And this, uh, the stamp set retails for $21, and here's the dies. I actually um, tagged my page so I could show you the dies. Uh, here are the die sets right here. And this is a $45.75 bundle. So the, the um, dies are retailed for $30, the stamp set for $21, and if you bundle, you get it for $45.75. So that is a great gift, and some lucky winner will get that. So just um, be, be encouraged. Um, if you've got some shopping to do, use my host code and make a $75 purchase and your name will go in for the drawing. So that's just a little incentive for January to get everybody going. And uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you is uh, Tuesday, uh, January the 5th, this ca these catalogs will go live. Now I cannot open these catalogs all I can do is just show you the front cover. I know, such a tease, isn't it? But Stampin' Up! won't allow us to show these. What we can do is show you some of the things that are in there. And one of the things I want to show you is this Darling Donkey. This is in our Celebration Catalog. 
And this set cannot be bought. It is a free set, and it is stinking adorable. Look at those little donkeys. And I made a card, the card that I'm going to show you today, I actually cased another Stamping Up demonstrator and used her idea. I changed it up with the colors just a tiny bit. I used a different matte color on mine than hers, and I used a different ribbon color. But um, Dawn Griffith uh, does beautiful, beautiful work, and I saw her make a card using this set, but the card itself was a fun fold card that I had never seen before. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But... Um, this is one of the free stamps, and, and because I'm using it, let me grab the card. Here is the card. Is that not adorable? And let me show you. You can slide this off. The ribbon either slides off, and we're going to do one today with a belly band to show you that you can do it versatile. But you can just slide that ribbon off and lay it to the side, and then look at this. Ta-da! <laughs> Is that not the most adorable card? And I just want to thank Dawn so much for having this on her channel. And now all of us can make this beautiful card. So uh, I did case her, um, her channel and I found this and I just could not help myself. Now to put this back on, you might have to lift up on the edge of the card just a little bit. But it slides right back over and it holds our card uh, together and I thought it was just so cute so I did another one and I used a stamp set that's in this mini catalog this is not a free stamp this is in the mini catalog and it's called hey girlfriend look at those little girls are they not adorable hey girlfriend I love that so I made this one using that same fold but I changed it up just a little bit I put my bow up here on this piece and I put a piece of ribbon that matched that, that can just slide off like that. And then watch this. Ta-da! Your kindness touch, touched my, touches my heart. And it's so cute and so versatile. And I think anybody would love to receive a card like this. So I'm going to show you guys how to make that today. And I think you're going to love it. Um, it's... The card itself is not hard, even though it looks a little intimidating. If you follow with me, um, don't try to make it along with me at first. Just kind of watch the video. And then once we're done, uh, you can go back. And all of the um, directions uh, for this will be in my blog as, as well as below the video. So you can go there and copy that and uh, actually print it out if you like, and that way you'll have the dimensions to do this card as much as you like. So I'm going to move these two stamp sets that I used to make these two out of our way. I'm also going to move my little freebie stamp. This is my set because I've already opened them and used them. This one has never been opened. It has not been used. The stickers haven't been put on or anything. This is a brand new stamp set and die set that will come to the winner of my drawing. So I'm going to set that over to the side so we can keep up with that. And I'm going to take my stamp sets and move them back over here. And I'm going to show you what we're going to be working with today. Move those cards out of the way as well. And let me bring in what we're going to be working with. I have the Whale Done stamp set. And this is in our annual catalog. And it comes with the coordinating uh, whale punch. It also comes with this beautiful designer series paper called Whale of a Time. And I want you to look how gorgeous this paper is. Look at these beautiful, I mean, it's almost impossible to show you just how gorgeous these are. I'm going to show them to you this way, and then I'm going to show them to you from the other side. And if you see those whales that were shown on there, you can actually punch those out of the paper with your punch, which is always great. Look at, I love, love, love that. I might have to use that piece for my solid. Look at those papers. Aren't they beautiful? They, if you are an ocean lover, I love that one too, the waves. 
Um, you, there, this paper, you are going to love it. It is just absolutely gorgeous. So, I need to decide with my card base what paper I'm going to use so I'll know. I'm almost thinking this piece. I don't know why, but I love this um, little crab there on the bottom of the ocean and this this, the greenery and I think this would be so pretty with a uh, pretty peacock and that is one of the coordinating papers that they talk about and if you are wondering where, what I mean they're talk about if you look on the on the cover of your designer series paper um, it will tell you uh, all of the different colors that coordinate with this paper pack Balmy Blue, Blackberry Bliss, Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, Granny Apple Green, Just Jade, Pacific Point, Pool Party, Pretty Peacock, Shaded Spruce, and Whisper White. So we are going to use, for my card base, we are going to use that Pretty Peacock. I think it will just be gorgeous. But before we go any further, I want to show you, I've clipped out of this piece of paper... I want to show you which piece I, I clipped it from. I clipped this whale out of here. And once you clip it, you might say, well, how do I get that to punch? I used a glue dot and just stuck a, a piece of scrap that I knew was long enough. And this is actually longer than it needs to be. But I can put this in here now and even it up just like I need it to be. So I'm going to bring it right about um, that looks good. And then I'm going to punch. Get this out and there's our whale. And how stinking cute is he? There he is on the stamped image and there he is clipped out of the paper. But what I did is I put that glue dot on. So you might want to rethink that. Maybe not a glue dot. Maybe um, a sticky note or a piece of washi tape might work better. So that did seem to, to gob up my, my um, punch just a little bit. But as you can see, it's still punching. But anyway, I thought what we would do is we'd use this. And I'm going to grab a piece of the Pretty Peacock. I think that's the color that I want to use. And this does take a full sheet of your um, 8.5 by 11 cardstock to make. But yeah, see how pretty that's going to coordinate with that color. I love those colors together. And you can also pull in some of this um, lighter colored greens and, and that terracotta tile right there. I mean, it's just limitless what you can do. And I do love the fact that you have so many options with a piece of paper like this, your designer series paper. I'm not sure that I'm going to use this because I want to stamp. I love stamping. And I want to see what this one is going to look like uh, stamped out. So we are going to pull this. And let's get our whale. And I'm trying to decide what color ink I want to stamp him in. I'll tell you what, before we start stamping, let's, let's do this. Let's go ahead and cut our card base. So in order to cut to do this card, you need an 8.5 by 11. And on the 11 inch side, you need to cut this to 10 and 1 4. Make sure it's 10 and 1 4. The reason I said that. I made a mistake and cut this like two times at ten and a half. It's not ten and a half, it's ten and one fourth. So that will give you a three quarter inch piece. So hang on to that piece. You might be able to use that for something. Then you're going to turn your cardstock. We can actually put our arm up now because we're not going to need that. Now we're going to cut this at four inches. And you're going to cut two four inch pieces off of this piece. So four and four.
And now what we're going to do is we're going to move our cut blade down and just have our score blade here. We're going to put it in like this. We're going to score this at five and one half. So five and a half, we're going to make a score line. And then what I'm going to do while I've got this piece in, I'm going to show you where we're going to do a check mark. I need to find my pencil. And it's right here. And a mechanical pencil works better for this because it will go down inside your track. What we're going to do, we scored right here. We're going to turn this all the way around to where you have the shorter piece because if you take this out and you fold it, you're going to see that you have a short end and a longer side. So you want your short side to be on your left. And you're going to line that up to four. Close your, your bar down and make a tick mark right there. And I'm going to bring that up to the camera so you can see what I did. See that tick mark right there? And if you measure from that score line over to that tick mark, it's going to be three quarters of an inch. So you're going to do both pieces like that. So we're going to be able to put this in. I'm going to show you one more time. We're going to, we're going to score it five and a half. And then we're going to turn it all the way around to where the short piece is on the left. And we're going to line it up to the four inch line. Close your bar and make a tick mark at four inches. Now, if you don't have this trimmer or if you're not using something that scores like that, you're using a, um, a scoreboard, after you score at five and a half, you can very easily take your ruler and come from the, come from the, um, fold line over to three-fourths. Your three-fourth inch line is going to be where you need to be. So that's another way to do it depending on what tools you're using. So let's go ahead and fold this and we're going to fold this down really well. Both pieces, get them burnished down. Now what you're going to do is you're going to bring your trimmer back up and we're going to do some more scoring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tick mark and I'm going to line it up in my track and even it with the point. You want to make sure that point is in your track. Now I'm going to come down and I'm just going to score. And then we're going to do the same thing with this piece. We're going to put that into the track and this to here. Just like that. You just want to make sure that that point is in that track. That is crucial. And score. So that's that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold our fold line down our angle and you want to make sure that they're nice and and straight if they're not straighten it up using your bone folder sometimes it does better to do it in the other direction just make sure that you're getting that nice and even all the way across and crease it down just like that. And then you're going to do the same thing with this one and crease it down. And you're going to have two pieces just like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn it Oops, we're going to turn this one. Turn one. So if they're both like this, just like that, you're going to take one and turn it and lay it in here. And then when you bring them together, you're going to have this nice little square on the top. Just like that. 
So again, if you fold them and they're both like this, so whichever way you hold them, you just want to fold them so that they're both showing like this. And I might take a picture of this so that you can see it. And then when you turn this one around, you're going to be able to even it up inside this piece. So this piece is going to go together to the inside of that one, and they match up perfectly. And then your triangles will be on the front, just like that. And you'll have that quarter, three quarters of an inch over here and three quarters of an inch over there. And that is our card. That is our card. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to put some glue on the back of this. I like to use glue for this because, oops, I got it on my work surface. I like to use glue for this because it gives you that wiggle room that you would need to make sure that that evens up in there perfectly. And I like to bring it up onto my work surface like that just to make sure everything evens up. And I'm going to grab a light and get that off of there. I don't like to get glue on my work surface. And I should have used my silicone mat, but I didn't. So I'm just going to wipe that up. get that fan that dry so that I can lay my uh, stuff down. There we go. All right, so now what we need to do is we need a three and a quarter by three and a quarter piece of um, designer series paper or something that will coordinate with this. I love that little bit, let's see what color that was. I'm thinking that was Bumblebee. So let's grab a piece of Bumblebee. And that is our in, one of our end colors. So I'm going to grab a sheet of Bumblebee. Let's see, I might have a scrap. I always take my scraps and put them back inside my packaging. And then that way, when I need a piece, I can look really quick and see if I have a piece that will work. I don't have a whole piece, but I do have this scrap that will definitely work for that. So I am going to cut this piece. Let's go ahead and put our glue back up. So we need a piece off of here that is going to be three and three fourths. Uh, three and three fourths. And then what we're going to do to get our angles, we're going to put this point into our track and this point in our track. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut two triangles out of this. I like to bring my score blade up to the center and sink that blade and then cut it. And the reason I like to do that is it doesn't cause your edges to wrinkle up. Now we can put this piece on right here. But what I like to do before I put them on is I like to go ahead and get my other piece done. So let's look at this piece and decide how we're going to cut it. So I think what I want to do is I want to cut a three inch piece off of this side. Not three, I'm sorry, three and a half. Three and a half inch. By three and a half. 
And I think I want this side to show, so three and a half. And now we're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to angle cut it in our track. So just keep moving it down to where you can get it completely lined up. There we go. That looks really good. And we're going to bring that blade to the center and cut. And now we have that little bit on both sides. And when it comes together, it's going to look like one whole piece. So I'm going to move my trimmer just for a minute while we put these pieces together. And what I like to do is I like to bring these pieces here first. And I'm going to use liquid glue. Again, the reason I'm using liquid glue is it gives me a little bit of wiggle time to get these on. And these can be a little bit more tricky than doing a rectangle. So I am going to bring that to here, even it up, making sure I'm getting that nice little quarter inch all the way around. That looks pretty. Then we're going to do the same thing with this piece. This one on just like this. Isn't that so pretty? And then when you bring these together, see how that's going to look like it's still that same piece. We just cut it in diagonals. So let's bring our I got glue on my fingers. So let's bring this and put it, yeah, that can go here. So I'm going to put glue on the back of this. And put that down right about there. And a good rule of thumb is just to take your bone folder and run over top of that. And what it does, it kind of pushes out that glue so it gets a really good seal. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on this one as well. And put it down. And I don't know, you know, I may use that, um, that little... Um, I've got glue on the top of this and all over my fingers. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this down without me making a total mess. Alright, let's put this right here. Just like that. Oh, so pretty. So, then when somebody opens, then we'll have our message in here. So to do our message, I am going to, why not use this bumblebee since we already have it out. And let's cut this piece to, let's see, I have my map pieces written down. All right, we need this piece to be three and seven eighths by five and five eighths. Three and seven eighths would bring us right about to there. Five and five eighths. So five, and then we're going to count our eighths. One, two, three. Oops, I didn't count them right. One, two, three, four, and five. Five eighths is right before the seven eighths. So now we have this piece that's going to go in here. 
like that. And we need to cut one more piece that's going to go on top. And I think I'm going to use maybe that balmy blue. What do y'all think? Or white. We could do... Hmm... I think I'm going to do balmy blue. I think that's going to look really pretty inside there. And... I've got balmy blue for sure. And here is a piece that we can cut out of there. And this piece needs to be three and three fourths. by five and one quarter, so five and one fourth. And then that piece will go over top of this piece and we're going to stamp on this. So I'm going to leave that out for just a moment. I'm going to move the card, those pieces over because now we need to work on our um, inside, what message we want to put on the inside, along with what stamps we want to put on the inside. We're definitely going to do some stamping. And I want to decide what I want to put on the outside as well, because we're going to do... I'm thinking that maybe this would be so cute. But I also love this, and I love the punch, because the punch is going to punch out some other pieces to build up our, um, our little... What if we did maybe... Inside we could do... Jellyfish, and maybe we could stamp this across the top. This looks like a little school of fishes. That would be cute. And how about a little seahorse? I just love doing the inside of my cards and making them look. Maybe we'll do some seahorses over here. And. Hoping your birthday fishes come true. That would be cute on the inside. And we can make this a happy birthday card. You're kind of you're kind of a big deal. That would be cute on the front with the whale. So let's stamp our whale and let's stamp him with a dark blue. How about a Pacific Blue, and I think you'd be pretty on this um, particular paper, the Balmy Blue. So I'm going to grab a stamp block and let's pick him up. And he's a little sticky, so I'm going to, since we're doing photopolymer, I am going to bring out my stamp and pierce mat, and let's ink him up and. Stamp. Let's do him one more time. Yeah, I don't know. Kind of like both of those. I just I got my stamping scrub over here, and I am cleaning it up up my stamp and let's go ahead and punch this out and see what it looks like punched so let's get him in there just like so And 
and punch. You get some of these other pieces that could be like his fin and his little the little water out of the blow, but I don't think we need that. And I actually think I like this one much better. So I think we're going to put this on a belly band that's going to go across our card. So I need to decide on the inside here, we are going to stamp some of this. So let me get him off. Let's pick up our jellyfish. And we're just going to stamp. Very pretty. And it's clean. And then we'll get a smaller stamp set for a uh, stamp block for these little ones. Just makes it a little easier to control. And we're going to do a seahorse here. And maybe here. Let's move that. And maybe one over by the fish, or the little jellyfish. And then let's get the little school of fish because these are going to be so cute going across the top. And then we're going to put our sentiment on a stamp block. Pick that up and put it right about here. Hoping your birthday fishes come true. So cute. And there we go. Now we have the inside ready. Now we just have to work on what we want to do on the outside. Now I want that whale because this is designer series paper that's not as thick as um, cardstock so I am going to take a piece of this um, maybe we can get it out of here let's see if we can punch one or you know what we could use the one we've already punched we could just line this up on the back side of that. That would give it a little bit more stability, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put some glue down on this one. And glue this down to that just like that and I'm going to wiggle it around to get it just where I want it. Now I'm going to make a belly band for this so let me go off camera and pick out some paper and designs that I want for my belly band and we'll be right back. Okay everybody we're back and I have cut a belly band and I cut this off an 11 inch uh, piece of cardstock but as you can see it's still not quite large enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to piece it with a piece of cardstock that matches and it's not going to really matter because I'm going to have a focal point that's going to cover this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of glue and just run a line of glue right across the end like that and uh, right across the end of this side. And then that way when I lay this into the glue it will adhere exactly where I want it to, just like that. 
and that will give us our belly band the size that we need it to go around our card. And I did measure this around my card before I actually did this. So now we have our belly band. And while I was off camera, I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to design the front of this. Uh, so I went in and I, I, I figured I wanted a die cut like a label die or something to go on the front of this. I didn't think that just that would be enough. I wanted it to be a little bit more decorative. So what I did is I took my um, Hippo, and, Hippo and Friends uh, die set and there's some beautiful label dies in this set and I chose the largest one of this particular one right here and I went ahead and cut that out and I used the balmy blue so I cut it out of this piece of cardstock right here. And once I got it cut, I wanted it to look like it was the ocean. So I used this uh, from the stamp set, the little piece of greenery, the larger one right there. And I stamped that and I used the um, Pretty Peacock ink. And then I used this the little coral right here. And I stamped that right there and I used the Calypso Coral for that. And then I took the little air bubbles. And this is a little, the little air bubbles right there. And I stamped all over the front of this so that it would give it that look of under the sea. And I thought, how cute would that be with our little whale? Maybe right about there. And we still have room enough to put a banner across this piece that says happy birthday. And then all of that can get adhered onto our banner or our, our band, our belly band, just like that. But I want to pop up my whale. And I did, you know, we glued this to the back of a piece of cardstock when we left earlier. So um, I think what I want to do right now is I want to glue this down in the middle. And I'm going to use some um, stamping seal because I want this to hold. This piece is going to get a lot of wear and tear. So I'm going to put lots of my seal on it. And I'm going to slide this onto my card so that I will know exactly where I want to place it. Because the last thing you want to do is get it on your card, I mean get it on the belly band and it not be in the right place. And then you'll be like, oh no, now i got to make my belly band all over again. And that's never a good thing. So let's slide that right there in the middle. And now we can take this piece and center it right where we want it. And I think right about there is good. Just like that. And that works perfect. Now we're ready to take our whale, and I don't care if his tail hangs off a little bit. I want him to look like he's kind of jumping, going up to the top of the, um, the water. And because I want to leave a place right here, and I'm thinking maybe a little piece like this across the middle with happy birthday stamped on it. And I did pull a stamp set, the one here's a card. I love that happy birthday, but I'm not sure if it's not going to be a little bit too big. So we may have to go into our itty bitty birthday greetings. Yeah, I think that's going to be too big. So let's pull our itty bitty birthday. This is another great stamp set that is wonderful to use when you have a small place. There's a happy birthday and there's one that says birthday wishes. I think that one would be really good. Um, let's see, birthday wishes. Let's look at them and see which one we think. And this is a great, a great way. We could say they say it's your birthday and then inside it would have that sentiment that says, um, uh, hoping all your birthday fishes come true. That would be cute. Um, let's do that one. They say it's your birthday, and that will be rather small and very easy to put across there, I think. Yeah, I think I like that. And we can probably cut it on a smaller piece. And I'm wondering... I'm wondering if we could cut a piece of this and 
put that right there. Hmm, I don't know. I like this, um, I like the bumblebee because it kind of ties everything else in. And we could do the Calypso Coral. That would be real pretty. But since we already have this out, let's let's go with it. And I'm thinking I want to use the Pretty Peacock ink. And I'm not sure how it's going to look on the bumblebee, but we're going to try it and see. So let's peel this one off. And pick this up. I like to straighten these out on my grid mat so that when I pick them up they're straight. You have a much better chance of getting a happy birthday straight if it's already straight on your block. So I'm going to ink that up. Yep. And I'm going to go down to the bottom of this right in the middle. Oh, that's good. That worked out really good. And we're going to go ahead and close this ink pad up so that I don't get my fingers in it and make a mess. So now what I want to do is I want to um, I'm going to bring up my trimmer and we're going to trim this off. So we just have that small amount going across. I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to put it right up in my trimmer about there. And I'm not really measuring this piece, I'm just cutting it. And I'm wondering if I want to make the little banner tail on each end of it. I think that would be really cute. Or you know what we could do? We could punch it. Let's try punching it. Regular tag punch. Because this punch is so versatile, not only can you punch out a um, angle in here like that, but you can also um, do your little banner cuts. And let me show you how easy it is with this punch to do that. What you want to do is get it in right like that and once you get it about where you want it, where it looks even, just punch and you got a perfect little banner on that and you can do the same thing for the other side. This is a great way if you don't feel comfortable doing it with the scissors, which, I mean, I don't mind doing it with the scissors or doing it this way, but for anybody that struggles with this, this is a great little punch to have in your craft room. So it is called the Tailored Tag Punch, and I love the way this works. Let's see if I can get my hand to cooperate with me. There we go. And then we got this all ready to go on the front of our card. So now that we have this ready, we still have to put our inside in, but we are getting there. So I am going to grab my dimensionals, and I know that I had them here just a moment ago. Okay. What did I do with my dimensionals? <laughs> I guess I can dig back in the drawer and get another one out, but I know I had them because I left them out because I knew I would be, here they are, I knew I would be using them for this. So I'm going to take our cute little whale, and I do need to get the other ones out because mm, maybe not. We can leave that tail. That way you're not wasting any of your um, stamping dimensionals. I'll put one there, and because this is going to get a lot of wear and tear and pull on it, I am putting a few more than I normally would, um, and I am going to put one of these on the tail, right across there. Okay. 
and I'm going to put one right here. And now we're going to just use our Take Your Pick tool and we will pick those off. And I'm going to grab these little ones first. And y'all are hearing my dog. She is just sawing logs down here. Bella. Bella. Wake up, baby girl. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, she is my little snore. Both of my dogs snore. They're both Shih Tzus. And anytime you have one of the dogs with the short snout, they tend to snore a little bit more than most of your dogs would. Let's see. Let's... You know, I don't think I'm going to need that one on the tail. That one is going to stick off, and we don't want it to stick to our card, so I'm going to stick that back on here. If I can get it to stay. Oh, come on. There we go. Now, let's put him about like that. And then we can put this right about how about right there that would be so attractive I like it right there so let's go ahead and put a couple of dimensionals we just need them right in the middle maybe two And we can put that right about there. And now we have our belly band completed. And isn't that pretty? I love the way that turned out. So now we can go ahead and put the inside down. Um, what I want to do is I want to get this piece on here first. And I am going back to my liquid glue. border because this one does have a very tiny border around it okay and then we can turn this over I like to hold it up it seems like I have more control over it and get all of my glue on here and then we'll bring our card back and now all we're going to do is place this down right like that. And press that down. And then our beautiful little happy birthday um, whale of a tail card is completed. Now I did get a little bit of glue right there. And I'm going to try using my glue eraser and see if I can get that off. And it got it off a little bit. You get any type of adhesives on your piece of um, cardstock or anything that you don't want. These, um, this is not a stamping up product, but everybody needs one of these in there. It's a Zyron eraser, and they work wonders. Up, 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 up. I put that down in my dimensional that I had peeled off. Okay. Yeah, cut that off a little bit. I'm going to try one other thing. I'm going to try a little bit of wipe. Sometimes we do that. We get a little zealous with our glue and we end up putting down more than what we intended to. And um, I am going to slide that over top of there just like that. And what a cute, cute card. 
Isn't that, isn't that precious? I love it. I think it turned out so nice. And again, it is different than the other two cards. Let me, um, let's move everything to the side. And we'll bring the other two cards out. And you can see the difference in the three. All the very same fold, and just done totally different. I love the way these turned out. I thought they were gorgeous. Um, you know, each one of them uh, has their own personality, and I just I absolutely love the way they came together. Um, the prettiness of, of all three of them. Uh, this one, like I told you earlier in the video, just has a piece of ribbon that I tied in a knot. I took the rest of the ribbon and I tied a bow and put it at the top. And you've got this beautiful little card, and I colored the inside with a little bit of pizzazz. I love to pizzazz up my inside of my cards. And then you can just very gently put this ribbon back on. Like I said, if you will bow the card just a little bit like that, it will slide right back on. And slide it up underneath the piece in the middle till you get to the middle. And that holds your piece on. And then we have this one, which is just absolutely adorable. And it is our little donkey. And it is another cute one. It says it's your birthday. So I've already got um, a couple of really cute birthday cards for this year. So this is a good time. You know, it's winter and we're not doing a whole lot outside. And um, a lot of us are at home. So this could be a very good time to get a start on your um, upcoming birthday cards for the year. So like I said, don't forget, I'm going to be giving away that um, beautiful birthday stamp set. So that will be another good way and a good excuse to get started on those birthday cards. Make yourself a list of family and friends and uh, do it in a notebook by month. And that way you can put their name and their the day of the week that their birthday is. And that way it can be a reminder uh, each week you can go in and look and see if you need to mail out a birthday card. So everybody loves to be remembered on their birthday. I don't care how young or old you are. So I hope y'all have enjoyed this tutorial. I so enjoyed bringing this one to you. It was so much fun. Don't forget about the promos that are coming up, the celebration, and our brand new catalog uh, goes live on the 5th of January, which is this Tuesday. And you're going to love the catalog. We're going to and probably do a flip through and I've got some new products coming and I can't wait to show those to you um, don't forget to use my host code for January it'll be in the description below the um, measurements for these cards and all of the now each one of these has a different um, front so you I won't do the fronts on these I will leave that to your discretion this was an oval a scalloped oval and a stitched oval put together this was um, taken from the ornate garden frames I believe they were called um, ornate layer ornate layer dies was this one and this was from the happy um, Hippo and Friends die set. So use whatever you have to make the front of your card, but the measurements for the card and the, the layers that go in it will be on the website, and I will put a note that you can decorate it any how you see fit. As long as it will fit on the front of your card, you can, you can make it yours. So until we uh, stamp again and until we craft again, may God bless you and keep you. It is my prayer that this coming year we will uh, be able to get this COVID under control and uh, that we can get back together with friends and family and uh, not be afraid. Uh, we know that God is not the author of fear, but we know who is, the enemy of this world and to our souls, and uh, we know he doesn't win. 
So I'm so thankful for that. As I always say in closing, let everything you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. He is so worthy of our praise. And until we craft again, I love each and every one of you so much. If you haven't subscribed, go hit that subscribe button. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.